good evening, good afternoon, maybe even good morning for a few of you. We are so delighted to welcome you to our um, conference this evening. We will start with a few announcements. There is interpretation. I mean, the main language will be English, but there is interpretation for those who need in French or in Russian. So if you go to the uh, translation button, you can choose the language that you, that you would like. Yes, you can see that there. And also, as this is a roundtable discussion, uh, there will probably not be time for questions from the audience. But if you have a pressing question to one of the speakers, you could put it in the chat with your email address, and we could pass that on to the speaker. So first, I would like to uh, extend a very warm greeting to you from our International uh, President, Dr. Julia Moon, and inter Senior Vice President, Dr. Sunjin Moon, who are uh, very much um, you know, involved in the preparations for this event and the, and the development of some of the programs uh, that we will be speaking about tonight. And um, of course, very much invested in all of the issues that we will be discussing. Since its inception, there has been a remarkable synergy for this particular uh, Women's Leadership Conference. We've been doing these for 20 years now, one or two a year. And this particular one, I think we all felt very excited because of the motive in doing it, because of the theme that we chose, and also because of the very dynamic partnerships that are involved in presenting this to you. Uh, maybe a word on each of those. The motive, um, this issue, very prominent also now at the United Nations and in conversations at all levels, actually, at the idea of intergenerational cooperation and understanding. This is something that is not so easy to come by necessarily. And uh, something that I think we you might discover in this uh, meeting this evening that we we have um, uh, really a good dynamic going and we have many concerned, uh, uh, common shared concerns actually that kind, kind of hold us together in this, uh, in this work. And, um, and another added dimension is the, uh, one of our partners is the International Association of First Ladies for Peace, which is an association of the Universal Peace Federation uh, that is building a global network of women leaders at the highest level, complementary to the political sphere of leaders and holding it to a higher standard. And of course, yeah. as first ladies, um, of course they have a, also a very vested interest in each of those nations that they are uh, have been responsible for. Also the theme we chose, securing a culture of peace, securing a culture of peace that has to do with sustainability and women's global leadership and mentoring. So mentoring, again, is that issue of intergenerational. And uh, our partners, um, we have, I think, a really a, a great and a diverse partnership. We have government members and former members in our, in our as contributors and partners. But we, we also have those as such as first ladies who shape leadership. We have our own Women's Federation for World Peace Global Network. And um, many, there are some of our main leaders in Europe will actually be participating in this event as speakers. And all of them have been very, very active in preparing and working so hard to see that this event could happen today and uh, that every, or everything could go well. And then finally, and very importantly, is our youth, our future leadership. So we have uh, the, the organizations that are represented, the International Association of First Ladies for Peace, the uh, International Association of uh, Youth and Students for Peace, and very, very importantly this year, related to the First Ladies Association, is the um, Renee Moawad Foundation. This is the foundation that is um, uh, 
has been founded by Mrs. Nela Mwawad, who has, is the co-host of our event today. And we are so really grateful to be welcoming her as our opening speaker. We hope, because they were having some trouble with the internet in Lebanon. In fact, two of our speakers have, um, uh, two of our speakers from Le Lebanon are still in the process of trying to join us. Um, maybe I can say another word, hoping that she will be able to join us in the next few moments. Um, it is important to note that the mentoring paradigm is important not only for our young inheritors of the mentorship, uh, but also very, very important for the mentor and the preservation of the good elements and the good building blocks of our civilization that are being passed on. If we cannot win our youth, if we cannot humbly listen to their ideas and they similarly listen to the ideas and experiences of elders and to catch the enthusiasm of one another and even be willing to reconsider our own perspectives from both sides, that would be very sad. But I don't think that is where we, we are at. And I think we will see in our discussion today that that is the case. So I'm looking for a, um, a word from my, from, looks like Mrs. Mawawad unfortunately is not on yet. Um, I would anyway like to say a word about her so that when she comes on, she can be, she is the, um, co-host, as I said, of this event, yes. um, but uh, personally, I am truly in awe of Mrs. Mwawad, Her Excellency, Madam Mwawad, her life of service and her deep commitment and love, sincerely her love and concern, both publicly and privately. As we see with her, Madam Mwawad, the history and quality of leadership and character cannot be lost, must be tapped into, must be passed on, and that is the element of mentorship that we will be talking about today. Uh, we are also celebrating Human Rights Day, December the 10th. It's still a, a week away, but we know those of us who are you know, familiar with that and even working in that area, there is still much, so much room for interpretation and application of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and its relationship to a viable, sustainable peace culture. Together with wise experts and young activists, we can identify priorities and we can design a plan that we can implement together. And this meeting today is meant to be a step in that direction. I am also listening today deeply as I didn't actually introduce myself, but, um, because I am also, as well as being president of the Women's Federation for World Peace in Europe and director of our United Nations offices, I am also president of the NGO Committee on the Status of Women in Geneva, working in cooperation, uh, in con consultation with the United Nations. And we have as our, our mandate to mediate the concerns and good practices of civil society at the United Nations, and hopefully, influence decisions that are taken there. Um, I would like to now introduce our speaker. Shall I move on to our second speaker? Because Mrs. Moawad is... I have to look at this, yeah. I think I have to, I don't want to miss her coming in. Someone, and I cannot see, I cannot see everyone. Uh, anyway, maybe I will go on to our second speaker. Uh, we just have a few introductory remarks this morning after Mrs. Mwawad. Uh, we would move on to Honorable Emanuela Del Rey. She, is, she will speak to us by video because she is busy on the job. She is a very, very active and important person. She is the United Nations Special Representative for the Sahel president of the Standing Committee on the Implementation of Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Expert on Conflict Studies. 
in, in Italy. She's member of the Italian Chamber of Deputies since 2018. Hello, Mrs. Moab is on. Oh, good. Okay. Um, maybe you can go mind. I think I will. I will backtrack. Then I will go back to Mrs. Moawad. Madam, Your Excellency, Madam Moawad, we we are so grateful, so happy that, that you are with us today. I have actually introduced you already in hopes that you would be able to to join. Yes, the message. Yeah. My message. Where is my message? Just stop mm -hmm. now. So I will, um, Mrs. Her Excellency, Mrs. Naila Mwawad, First Lady. Hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, First Lady of Lebanon in the 1989, founder and president of the Rene Mwawad Foundation, member of parliament, minister of social affairs. She has been one of the pillars in her country in the fight for human rights, rule of law, freedom of expression, social justice, and good governance, and a great mentor of many young people. So, Your Excellency, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much, and uh, good evening, uh, ladies. I'm so pleased to join uh, this online gathering. Uh, because it's being, it's being held to uh, this online gathering that is being held to encourage and facilitate the culture of peace in our societies. Women leaders and women leaders and mentors are playing a crucial role, a very crucial role in promoting peace, a peaceful and prosperous society is something we all dream of but it can only be realized if especially uh, as women leaders are really committed to create a foundation for peace and the bridges between the various cultures, traditions, ethnicities, etc., etc., that are all very hardly and very, uh, very uh, much uh, uh, needed. So, I agree with the YFWP Women Federation that Nobel declarations such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights are many, but societies everywhere need role and need, need role models who will guide and inspire people to live by these declarations. Especially we as first ladies, and other influential women have an important role in inspiring and influencing a culture of peace rooted in shared prosperity and core values. As you might already know, in Lebanon, we are, uh, we are uh, in a very difficult situation. And I think, and I think we are a very difficult situation. And I think that women have an important role to play, not only in Lebanon, all over the world, but now we are talking about Lebanon and really we are in a very, uh, very bad situation. So, uh, so, so I'm not, laughing because we are in a bad situation. I'm laughing because we, are, we have been fed up to talk about our bad situation. We have been very hurt about this, uh, uh, this, uh, this crisis uh, in various forms, such an economic and uh, political and all what you can imagine crisis. Hence, I believe that women's role in shaping our society is paramount. And I hope that we, as women leaders, can really take the action needed to bring about a positive change and a change. And I'm sure that we really can, especially if we, we, we are able to, uh, to contact each other and to be together to work for the whole uh, for the whole world, and uh, we can really take action needed to bring about a positive change. So, 
So I'm very grateful that we are uh, here together. And uh, I, I hope really that this meeting all together will have a real product because I, I myself as a woman, I've seen how important the role of women is. First of all, in many areas of Lebanon and of the whole world, uh, men are not admitted to discuss and argue with women. Whereas we can do whatever we want, we can do however we want, and especially if you are all together in other countries as well, to be able to to, to be able to uh, find a, really a solution. I can tell you that uh, really it's not because uh, I'm Naila, but I'm a woman and I know that we have, I have been able to, to contact and to be in touch with uh, many, many, many uh, people, mainly uh, women, Especially, as I said, that in in uh, in uh, many in many uh, areas of Lebanon, in many areas of Lebanon, uh, they they uh, they have been they have been uh, uh, very positive when women were talking to them, when where where women were uh, trying to take. To, to, to take their opinion, which usually men don't. So if we take each other's opinions, if we work together, if we, if we, uh, we give them the, 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 not an impression, but a reality that we believe in their role, that we believe in their, uh, in their uh, action, that we believe that if we are together, we can do a lot for for uh, for the peace in Lebanon as well as as all over other countries. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Your Excellency. Um, we are so grateful, actually, that we have this opportunity to meet you. I wish, we all wish, surely, that we could be in person, as we, in the past, we used to always do. We had our events and our conferences in person. It was, we could have meals together and coffee together, and we could go much more deeply into all of our topics. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join us today, but also in co-hosting this event. And we are all determined to really that make this a first step in really doing something together, in this, also in this network for the International Association of First Ladies for Peace. And we really appreciate your commitment to all of these issues, really exemplary commitment to all of these issues that we will be discussing today. So thank you so very much. I have to thank you to have taken, to, to have bothered uh, yourself to, to prepare this because we really badly need. Mm -hmm. In Lebanon, as I was saying, and in other countries, uh, the whole world is not going well. And I must tell you, in Lebanon, it's worse and worse and worse every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping that we will keep in touch. I'm hoping that we will keep trying to, to, to really find solutions. And I'm sure that women will be exceptional in this sort of, uh, that sort, but in this uh, uh, aim for all of us, because I have a very good relation and a very good, uh, 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 if you want, uh, I, I have a very good uh, experience in such things where women really did improve a lot the society, improved a lot uh, the needs of the people, and improved a lot themselves and everyone. I am also convinced of that, and I think probably all of our participants today believe that too. I think if we can merge our networks and really work on something together, we can really, we can do very much together. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, Madam Muawat. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, 
Our next speaker, whom I actually I just had introduced, uh, Honorable Emmanuel and um, Emanuela Del Rey, the EU Special Representative for the Sahel and much more. You can read, I think, the the bio in the chat. Uh, I would like to invite her. She will come to us through a pre-recorded video, as mentioned, because she is very busy right now and traveling and has other commitments, but would have liked very much to be with us. So, Honorable Emanuela Del Rey. Fantastic opportunity to be here today with the Women's Federation for World Peace International. It is a fantastic opportunity because uh, uh, in my work uh, and at the moment as a, repre a special representative of the European Union for the Sahel, I meet many women. Uh, usually uh, groups of women that are called uh, le women leader in some specific sectors, but also students, but also uh, religious uh, leaders and others, all women who are participating in specific uh, social processes, political processes, economic processes uh, giving their contribution and uh, of course they need an immense support especially in countries where unfortunately access to basic services is non-existent the political participation at higher level is complex very complex and uh, sometimes even dangerous and of course uh, the role of women is often uh, shadowed by that of men uh, and therefore it's very difficult for them to act uh, with a certain efficacy or Although, of course, they have all the competencies to become uh, real leaders and change the situation. Just to give you an example, uh, women uh, lawyers in Burkina Faso. It's an association that uh, does uh, uh, provides assistance, assistance pro bono to women victims of violence in a country where the laws are lacking, uh, structures are lacking, uh, protection is lacking, and even uh, police forces are not uh, able to intervene so uh, the, the, the the effort of these women is really heroic and of course when I hear that uh, the um, women's uh, um, foundation uh, for world peace uh, is uh, uh, engaged in mentoring I think is the only way to uh, go further in our fight uh, for women's rights and also to make sure that women are able to uh, play their important role in society which is that of social agents that can really change things at, at, and at least uh, be able to create social dynamics that can foster uh, the change in society and become a point of reference for other women in the world so thank you very much for this invitation of course i'm on your side and uh, i really praise your work especially in mentoring and i really hope that the network will always expand and will include more women from Africa in particular who are uh, still neglected and victim of uh, a narrative that really penalizes their ability to uh, intervene at global level and this is our responsibility to, uh, to change for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Emanuela Del Rey. Um, clearly someone engaged for the people uh, whose leadership is really reflecting her deep, deep concern for the people, for the women, uh, and how important it is to have this opportunity to listen to one another. Our next uh, message to you will come from uh, a former First Lady of Portugal. Her name is Honorable Dr. Maria Cavallo uh, Silva, Professor of Portuguese Language and Culture. Her special attention goes to the education to education and cultural issues, but also to social solidarity and cohesion. Her activity agenda includes the challenges that families and youth face and the new demands in social assistance. So she is ever busy and ever working. Her message, she sent by text, because again, uh, in this time of so much, so many things to do. Um, she she offered to send us her her short text to be read in her behalf, titled "Securing a Culture of Peace." In Europe, our lifetime has been deeply marked by the experience of war. 
War has crossed the lives of our grandparents, our parents, and ours as well. And those who have lived in times of war give much more value to times of peace. Without a clear awareness of the importance of peace and harmony between peoples and nations, the future of our children and grandchildren will be inevitably threatened. In that sense, I welcome the initiative of the conference Securing a Culture of Peace and Women's Global Leadership and Mentoring, wishing that the spirit of commitment, dialogue, common sense, and compromise in the name of a greater good, which, for example, presided over the construction of the European Union and helped to overcome decades of conflict. And this can serve as an inspiration for the discussion and the identification of new paths to follow. Thank you so much, Dr. Maria Cavallo, Cavaco Silva. So now I would like to introduce um, for the second part of our, of our program today, this is the round table discussion. I would like to introduce you to the moderator. Uh, her name is Ms. Kyungin Vanderven Oliveira. Born and raised in Amsterdam, Netherlands, youth representative of the Women's Federation for World Peace since 2011. I remember very well. She was taking pictures at many of our events, and now she has really, really a very, uh, I would say she has a very instrumental role actually participating in our uh, UN office work, United Nations office work. Uh, and also she was working with Women's Federation chapter in, in the Netherlands. Um, she was also working as a legal guardian and child advocate of unaccompanied, unaccompanied minor asylum seekers at the National Guardian Institution at the Netherlands. Uh, Ms. Kyongin van de Ven Oliveira, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hanchen, for your nice introduction and your nice leadership. Um, thank you so much. Uh, welcome everyone uh, again uh, to the second part of our um, uh, leadership conference, uh, Women's Global Leadership and Mentoring, highlighting what we women leaders can do uh, to impact peace in this world. And I am very honored that I can present uh, the second part and uh, very excited and also delighted to uh, uh, present our panelists to you this evening. Um, so um, we have a mixture. Uh, we have some uh, distinguished and well-respected experienced women leaders that will first have the floor. And then they also brought their mentees this time uh, as mentoring is the subject. So uh, after the experienced leaders, we will hear from the youth leaders uh, who will also um, highlight uh, the, their vision on peace and mentoring. So first, uh, I would like to introduce um, uh, Magister Christine Mutona. Uh, she has a very broad political career and also in uh, teaching, but she has been, for example, president of the OSCE, uh, the Organization for Security and uh, Cooperation in Europe, uh, in 2016, 2017. Uh, many more, you can read it in the chat. And um, yeah, she is uh, committed to strengthening conflict resolution capacities in international organizations in foreign policies. And other priorities include the emphasis on the role of women in conflicts at nuclear disarmament. Uh, Magister uh, Matona, we're very happy and delighted that you're here. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the in invitation. Um, I am pleased and I'm honored to be with you uh, here today. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I felt the imbalance between girls and boys, between men and women. Although times have changed, girls are still kept back and women are still prevented from fully realizing their potential. When we come to securing a culture of peace, everything seems quite clear. We definitely need women. All the facts are on the table. Research shows 
Gender equality prevents violence against women and children. Women are absolutely needed in peacekeeping and peace building. Women's security is directly related uh, to national and international security. Women participation even makes our communities healthier. A study says that countries with female leaders coped better with COVID-19 so far. Gender equality, we know it, is good for the economy. And another issue, women are more sensitive when it comes to climate change. And besides, we shouldn't forget, gender equality is a human right. So we should know better by now. It is already 21 years ago that the Security Council passed resolution 1325 on women, peace and security, not only acknowledging that during a time of war and armed conflict, women and children suffer most, but it also says that women play an important role in peacekeeping and peace building. When women are at the negotiation table, agreements usually are more holistic, better accepted and last longer. So how can it be that at the United Nations General Assembly last year, there were only a few women representatives and the first 52 speeches, just imagine the first 52 speeches were held only by men. And if you look at the diplomatic service, there are mainly men presenting their countries. Having been in parliament for 18 years, but also having been a teacher for history and political education, I'd like to focus on a few questions. How can we gain a more female foreign policy to secure a culture of peace? We certainly don't need more resolutions. We have to implement them. How can we start to change the mindset of a society towards a gender balanced one? One point is visibility, raising awareness in the area where we operate to strengthen and to encourage women. As president of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly, women and security was high on my agenda. I organized an international conference on security policy from female perspectives. I wanted to show that women are not only victims, but they can change things especially if they work together nationally and internationally. Campaigning for becoming president was not a clear path for me. First, I had a family conference, if I should run at all, because it takes a lot of time. Second, I was unsure if, if I was at all capable of this kind of leadership. As I was told later by someone, a typical female approach. I learned that we have to be more courageous and trust ourselves, maybe with the help of a mentor. When I won the pre-election in my own political group, one of the male contestants from my own party continued to run as independent candidate for the position, although he had been defeated by me, a woman. Nevertheless, I was elected president of the OECPA by the majority of delegates of the 56 member states, being only the second female president within 25 years, with support of the women across the party lines. There is a third female president now from another political group, and she stated that she had been encouraged to run for the presidency by having had a female president before as a role model. So what we need is certainly networking among women, supporting each other. And even if we do have different political opinions, treat each other with respect. We should indicate immediately if women are treated disrespectfully or if women are patronized in discussions or groups. There is a project by the Swedish government, hashtag WIPIGAP, to have articles written about women by women, because in Wikipedia there are four times more articles about men than women. 
Visibilities to strengthen women and encourage them was also a project in the higher technical school I had been teaching. Out of 1,000 students, there were only about 100 girls. So usually, there were only one or two girls in a class. An absolute minority, no relevant number. When I organized an exhibition of, on female scientists, I invited the girls for the opening of the exhibition half an hour earlier than the rest of the students. The girls themselves were astonished at the amount of female students and realized that even 100 is a big number to change things in the college if they are connected. Education and schools are enormously important factors. As a teacher, it was my intention to make students aware with which impact political, uh, politics have on their lives. And questions about gender balance were always part of the discussions. We have to make young people getting interested in politics. We have to provide them with information and facts. And we have to make them courageous enough to engage in politics, especially girls. In the secure environment of a classroom, girls and boys can test their ability to argue for or against in a discussion. To secure peace and well-being for all, we have to include women in parliaments. Only 25.5% are female parliamentarians worldwide. I think a quota is helpful. Otherwise, we have to wait another 130 years or more. We have to have uh, include women in the administration. The higher you get, the fewer women you find. We have to put pressure on all countries who have not yet set up a national action plan to implement 1325. And gender equality is needed when it comes to diplomatic posts and to UN peace mission. To make this all possible, we definitely need family-friendly working hours for fathers and mothers, because there are children also have fathers, and shared household and childcare. A well-organized public chair child, child care is absolutely needed with early childhood education, teaching social skills and competences. There should not longer be the question career or family, both should be possible, both for men and women. Women are crucial in all areas of social life and when it comes to security, to peacekeeping and peace building. But they have to have the same possibilities as men. If not, we will continue slipping from one crisis to the next. And don't forget, we women are half of the population. So why not claim half of the power? Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Magister Mutonen, for your inspired and heartfelt intervention. Thank you very much, uh, highlighting that it's still very needed uh, to make the women leaders visible and encourage the women leaders to be there and be present and to address the importance of the women leadership uh, on all levels of society to impact uh, um, there uh, to impact a positive change. So thank you so much for your intervention. Uh, next uh, speaker uh, on the panel is uh, Her Excellency Madame Naziha Labidi. Um, she has been a Minister of Women, Family, Children and Seniors from September 2016 to March 20, 2020. She's the Director of Women's Promotion and Ministry of Women and Family uh, and she's also currently vice president of the think, think tank IA, IPA SSS and president of the Women, Peace and Security Commission of the African Women's Leader Network Tunisia. So, uh, Madame and Labidi, we are very delighted and honored that you're here with us today. And the floor is yours. Bonsoir. Good evening. Thank you very much. Your Honor, Excellency, Mrs. Naila Mouawad, First Lady of Lebanon, Mrs. Caroline Hunchin, President of uh, Women's Federation for World Peace in Europe and the Middle East, 
And also Excellency Emmanuela Del Rey, Vice President of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in Italy, Dr. Maria Cavaco Silva, First Lady of Portugal. In this occasion of high importance and on the approach subject and uh, Uh, through the eminent quality of the organizers and participants, I'm pleased to address my warm thanks for the invitation to take part in this event. I can't see many men, but ladies and gentlemen, addressing the subject of peace and security is at the very heart of all development and respect for human rights. There is no human life without dignity. A few weeks ago, we celebrated the 21st anniversary of the Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security. These days, we're celebrating the 16 days of activism to fight against violence against women. And we're on the threshold of the celebration of the International Human Rights Day. These are moments to reflect and to take a step back from our daily life, from our experience and from the experience of people who suffer from exodus, famine, all kinds of wars, and of the stateless people who wander here and there without roots or wings. So uh, for us, the pressing question is to know what role women uh, will play in uh, their society. Do women have a history? The answer is obvious. It is a big yes for women. In the limited time given to me, I will only uh, talk about Tunisian women and uh, Tunisian experience. I will start with history. I quote Alisa, who came from Tyre in Lebanon, and um, I agree, the president of Lebanon, And uh, this Alissa founded in Carthage in 850 BC. The first republic was one of the oldest constitutions, according to Secretis. There's also El Kaina, who pushed back the Arab conquest many times, and in despair, she immolated herself and burned all the land. Later on in the history, uh, Princess Arua in 735 AD established the Karuan contract by abolishing polygamy, a contract that has become famous. There's also Fatima El Fera, founder of the first Arab university in Fez in Morocco. But what is uh, the role of women in Tunisia today? Almost uh, 70 years after the promulgation of the Personal Status Code in 1956 by the late Abi Bourguiba, the first president of the Republic who abolished polygamy, only marriage is recognized according to the legal norms, no more repudiation and many other achievements. As uh, we move forward in history, and thanks to the democratization of education to gender diversity, women currently constitute more than 60% of magistrates, doctors, medical doctors, business women, and so on. We are reaping the fruit of these achievements with the appointment of Professor Naila Boudin as the first female head of government in the Arab world. We all know that uh, women carry half of the sky So let's give them half of the power. And I say they will accomplish miracle. In 2013 in Tunisia, when the danger starts to weigh on women's rights, more than one million women and men also said no. No to the will to make women the complement of of men. We remain firmly, so Tunisian women, to determine to preserve equality and respect for our dignity. Finally, after a long struggle, equality was enshrined in the 2014 Constitution in Articles uh, 46 and 21. So Tunisian women are leaders in all professions, uh, included in the armed forces, heads of armed missions around the world. So the Council of Pairs created in 2017 for equality in decision-making positions is chaired by the head of government and has developed its national and sectoral action plan reinforced by a bill that for each vacant position of high responsibility, 
um, they need four CVs, two women and two men, to guarantee equity between women and men according to competence and to constitute a pool of female skills. So, as Simone de Beauvoir said, we are not born women, we become women. I would say we're not born leaders, we become them thanks to our self-confidence, our resilience and our determination. It is up to us women, women of the world, to preserve our dignity and persevere without break and to be united in one. To finish, I'd like to say, Your Honor, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention and wish that peace reigns in the world and takes root in the minds and is translated into actions and deeds. If you allow me to add, I'd like to talk about an event that took place yesterday with the former president of Malta. Uh, we launched with uh, this former president, marie Louise Breca. We launched the movement for uh, the children around the Mediterranean to uh, guarantee peace and security for children and, of course, also for women uh, in the Mediterranean. So it was a great event yesterday for us. So I'd like to thank Uh, the president of Malta, who is a wonderful, uh, great woman for peace and security and for the children. Thank you. Merci, bien, Madame uh, Nazia Labidi. Thank you so much for your uh, intervention and your wisdom and perspective. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, we want to apologize because there had been some difficulties with the translation. So, um, Uh, for the French speaking, it was the best and it was really, uh, and we appreciate the wisdom and we can see how we can still uh, forward the translation for the English speaking. So thank you again for being on this panel and being here today with us. Then I would like to introduce uh, the last uh, senior or, or experienced um, uh, women leader that we have on the panel today. It's uh, Honorable Atlira Cepani. She is a national coordinator for the Women's Network Equality in Decision Making Albania. Uh, it's a network of women and girls in politics and decision making from all political parties, media, business and civil society. And now a strong voice supporting the promotion of gender equality in Albania. And it's also, uh, she has also some engagement in campaigns for social change and supporting the communities in need. Honorable Lira Cepani, it's so nice to see you with a beautiful smile. Welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, I'm so honored to be here uh, with such a Please unmute. Group. Please I, unmute. Unmute? I, I am unmuted. Is it okay? Can you hear me? It's, it's okay. okay. We can hear you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I was saying that I'm so honored uh -huh. to participate in this uh, great event with uh, such uh, inspiring women that I've had also the possibility to, to meet during uh, my, my different trips. And uh, it's such an honor to, to hear the wonderful experiences and uh, the wonderful models that they are. And it's so beautiful, although in Zoom and in, uh, virtually, that we are together and that we speak about women empowerment and how we can support each other and how we can be uh, better leaders in our communities, better leaders in politics and better leaders also in our families. Um, I am Adira Cepani and I, as, I, as you said, I lead the uh, Women's Network Equality in Decision Making, uh, which is a network, it's very um, interesting uh, composition. We um, are 50% members from the left political uh, wing parties and from 50% uh, from the other right uh, wing political parties. It's a group of women that uh, from all the cities and the regions of Albania, they work together for women uh, empowerment, especially in decision making positions and in leadership. Uh, as in many countries, also Albania has uh, very polarized politics. And uh, when 
we established this uh, network as a group of women that wanted to make a change. Uh, everybody thought that we wouldn't survive for neither one month uh, from different political parties, different professions, uh, different cities and different interests. Uh, we are here after 12 years and uh, we have shown in many of uh, the activities that we do, but also we women leaders that we've worked with have shown that women leaders know how to cooperate despite the differences. Women leaders know how to make a differences and uh, how to work together for a cause. So this is uh, such a wonderful and inspiring message that I'm getting also through, through, this, uh, through this conference. Of course, um, uh, equal participation in politics and guaranteeing equal access to political life is essential to the democratic development and sustainability. We, we made as globally, but also as a country, numerous and positive legislative efforts to promote women's participation in social and political life. However, many of these efforts remain, as we say, tokenistic. Why? Because from one side, we see much more women uh, being in positions of, of uh, leadership. We see women more visible uh, in the media. We see uh, women uh, voice that is heard more, but uh, we are still speaking about, uh, we're still speaking about numbers. Uh, we have women's quotas that are almost in, uh, in every country where it, uh, they are still necessary. And uh, although this, through this quota, uh, we have achieved, uh, for example, in Albania, a, a historical number of women representation in the parliament of 33% of uh, women in the Albanian parliament. We have the 50% of women in, uh, represented in local councils. And we have, as the first country in the world with more women in the executive uh, government, we have 70% women in the uh, government. So uh, at a matter of legislations and numbers, we can say that we have been doing gigantic steps for the empowerment of women, but we cannot stop only in uh, numbers. The increased number of women uh, representation it doesn't uh, guarantee all the time that they have substantial influence over policy and, uh, and decisions. Women in every field of decision-making, and I'm sure that uh, my colleagues that are part uh, of decision-making and of policy-making agree, they still encounter uh, resistance in their pathway to break the famous, uh, that we call the glass ceilings. So during our constant work with women at every level of decision-making, but women that work in every field, we see that they share numerous obstacles while articulating and expressing their interests in the political arena. Uh, the obstacles are, might be different, are social, cultural, economical, uh, stereotypes, the mentality, the will of the political parties uh, to, uh, to support or not uh, women, the lack of information, the lack of visibility as our uh, previous speaker was, uh, was, uh, was saying, um, and the visibility of their role and their uh, skills and also lack of uh, confidence sometimes that we can address with different uh, initiatives if, if we see it important. Um, Actually, unfortunately, the world is not in a very good state. It is facing a dangerous combination of health, humanitarian, and also political crisis. And in this moment, especially, it's uh, critical that women participation uh, is there in order to secure a lasting peace and security for all our societies. One of the areas that we work with is also women, peace and security, as we call. And many times when we say that we work with this area, they ask us, why do you need to speak about gender equality in the security sector? And we say that there are two main reasons, of course, uh, because women are very active agents of peace in armed conflicts, uh, 
and wars in their societies, but yet their role as key players and agents of change is not uh, largely recognized, unfortunately yet. On the other hand, it's well known that uh, violent conflict disproportionately affects women and girls and uh, unfortunately intensifies in societies where pre-existing gender inequalities and discriminations are, uh, are present. So we need to be uh, very careful and uh, very serious in integrating the gender mainstreaming also in this uh, sector, which is very uh, important and in which women are one of the most important uh, agents of, uh, of change. It's been such a great experience in my last visit to Lebanon to see that uh, most of the women leaders that I, that I met, they had contributed so much to their, uh, to their society and they were the role models that people wanted and that people needed. So it's very important to promote uh, the role of women as peace, uh, as peace agents and to promote their role in, uh, in decision-making structure in this, uh, in this sector. And after many requests, uh, awareness and uh, work from civil society and international organizations, only in the 2000s, fortunately, we, uh, we now have in different countries with uh, being uh, uh, secured and being ratified, the Security Council Resolution 1325, which was the first resolution that recognized the disproportionate and unique impact of armed conflict on women and girls, and acknowledged the contributions of women and girls that they made to the conflict prevention, peacekeeping, and conflict resolution. This convention and the work that we do and that we need to do in, the, in our societies, and especially in matters of peace and security, is to reaffirm that with the women's full, equal, and meaningful participation in peace processes and political solutions is essential and is secured for effective uh, peace, uh, peacekeeping. In order to have an effective participation of women in peace building processes, we need to continually, uh, continuously and seriously invest in acknowledging their role, their important role, uh, opening the path and supporting them, increasing their uh, capacity, uh, capacities, supporting them in their path to uh, being role models and being women, uh, women leaders. And sometimes here, uh, we take the question, why do the women that are already empowered need to be empowered more? Because they are the role models that uh, lead other women and are the voice of those marginalized women and women in need that do not have a voice. So we need to support women in leadership and we need to mentor as well women in leadership to increase their role and to increase also their, uh, their impact and the voice that they have uh, in the society, society. On the other hand, it's very important as our uh, uh, previous speaker colleague said, the work with media. The work with media is very important uh, in the gender sensitive reporting side, removing the stereotypical barriers and promoting women as role models and raising their voices as agents of, uh, of change. It's important so for all of us working together to address social, economical, culture, political barriers, and protection risks that limit women's full participation in achieving and uh, sustaining peace. What last, one last quote that we always say, uh, as in Albania, we are considered the country of eagles. We always say that an eagle cannot fly with only one wing, that would be men and boys. It needs both wings, it, be, it needs both men, women, boys and girls to fly all together for a better future and for, for a better present. Investing in values, in family, and investing in leaders with integrity that want to make a change. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Cepani, for your very inspired intervention. And you're a true activist, so we can hear that. And uh, yeah, congratulations on all uh, your achievements. And thank you for uh, promoting uh, the, key, uh, the key role that women have to play as, as, 
as change uh, change advocates and women leaders in the world and the the details you mentioned it's so important how we can influence and make a social impact on all uh, fields of life thank you so much for your contribution and intervention so uh here with we we also conclude our senior uh or experienced panel and now we're going uh to our youth uh, participants so um our experienced women leaders brought their mentees this time, and we're very excited to have this combination on our panel today. And I quickly will uh, present to you our first uh, youth speaker. It's uh, Marlies Lattstetter. She's uh, president of the International Association for uh, Youth uh, and Students for Peace. Uh, she's from Austria. And she is an assistant to the management board of the Austrian Red Cross in Vienna and youth team coordinator of the Universal Peace Federation in Austria. So um, very welcome, Mrs. Lattstetter. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear excellencies, it's my honor to talk to you today. Since I'm a teenager, peace was always of interest to me and also very important. Currently, I work at the Austrian Red Cross and also do a master's in international peace. After my A-levels, I decided to do also volunteer year in Oceania. Part of it was doing service projects in Fiji and the Solomon Islands. Although the locals do not have much themselves, they actually always shared it with us. They embrace others as part of the family, although they actually barely know them. I think we from the Western society can learn a lot from them, as individualism is actually growing each day. Having had those valuable experiences, I can just recommend every young person to volunteer somewhere and experience also something like that. I personally think that peace is also very much linked to trying to understand and respect other, other cultures and beliefs. I believe that women play also a very important role in securing peace and to cultivate a culture of peace. When researching what attributes are actually important for a good leader, one can find that a really true leader serves others. Women in the nature have a motherly heart. A mother serves the family and wants to bring harmony in the family. A mother teaches her children all the most essential things in life how to treat others, and so on. A mother has the heart to forgive her children. Hence, women as leaders have also a similar role to play, I think. Women uh, have good communication skills and also good mediators. Hence, also celebrating Human Rights Day soon. Let us not forget that all we are all human beings are born free and also equal, equal in dignity and rights. Research shows that there are actually a lot of benefits when women take leadership positions in our society and in businesses. Women's decisions are more likely to be inclusive and take diverse views into account. Peace agreements are 35% actually more likely to last at least 15 years if women leaders are engaged in its creation and execution. When women hold more executive leadership positions, the companies are also more profitable. So since 2019, I'm the president of Youth and Students for Peace in Austria. YSP is an international organization and our vision is to build a world of peace. Our goal is to empower especially youth and students to become global citizens through education and personal development and peace projects supporting the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In Austria, we focus on current issues such as preventing radicalization of young people, cultural events, UN days, environmental projects, and peace designer programs. The peace designer program is actually a learning program that coaches the youth to design their own peace projects based on individual strengths and useful passions. The focus is to put the energy and talent into helping address community-based concerns. When they work in teams, participants prepare the peace projects to also implement through a step-by-step -step process of discussion and planning. Personally, now also our topic today is 
mentoring. I feel I have many great mentors and I believe also having a mentor or a role model is very important for the youth. For me personally, I feel my parents have been very great mentors to me and also my uncle, Peter Heider, who is the president of the Universal Peace Federation and Renate Amesbauer, the leader of the Women's Federation of World Peace, who I could work with and also I could learn a lot from them. I can just recommend young people, as I said, to really have a mentor in their regards. In this regard, I want to also thank Christina Mottonen for her words and maybe also for the discussion later on, I want to ask you this question. What is your actually your advice for young women to become successful in life? Currently, we are also living in a global pandemic. I believe that we should not forget actually about our humanity. Only if we work also, I think, together on this issue, I believe we can fight this pandemic. Women also, I think, play a very important role in this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Bernice, L Mrs. Lutzstetter. Thank you so much for your uh, contribution and explaining about uh, Students for Peace and um, uh, also what mentoring uh, has or what role models in mentoring ha has meant for you. Thank you very much. We will see you uh, uh, again in our roundtable discussion. And next up, I want to introduce our next youth speaker. Uh, we're very happy that we at least have one a man in our panel today. He's the only one, but we're very um, sure that he will uh, uh, have a good voice. Uh, his name is Mr. Usama Kabir. He's a doctoral student at the Institut Supérieur de Gestion de Tunis, an officer in the Tunisian army, a military officer, a weapon systems engineer, and doctoral candidate in artificial intelligence from the Higher Institute of Management, University of Tunis, and lots more. Uh, very welcome, Mr. Kabir. The floor is yours. Thank you. I am honored today to be with you tonight. I will answer briefly to the most frequent question about inter, uh, integrating a culture of peace. Then I will speak about the main concept of this culture. The first question is, why is human rights and culture of peace is important? The human rights are the foundation of freedom, justice and peace. The respect allows the individual and the community to full develop. The development of human rights has its the struggle for freedoms and equality everywhere in the world. The second question is, how is peace related to the human rights? Uh, the answer is, uh, the human rights of all persons to peace and disarmament is uh, inextricably linked to all other human rights uh, that are universal and divisible, interconnected and interdependent. The human rights to the peace and disarmament include the human rights to freedom uh, from torture and uh, crucial uh, treatment or punishment. The concept of uh, a culture of peace has now grown into a global movement. Within the culture of peace framework, peace embraces for more than absence of conflicts. It encompasses tolerance, disarmament, sustainable economic and social development, democratic participation, gender equality, freedom of experience, and respect for human rights. The transition for, uh, from a culture of war to a culture of peace requires the transformation of individual behavior as well as ancestral practice. Learning to live in peace and the harmony is a long-term process and beings and begins with the development of inner peace and nurturing attitude that promote the expansion and integration of peace principle. A culture of peace is an integral uh, approach to preventing violence and violent conflicts and an alternative to the culture of war and violence. As defined by the United Nations, culture of peace is a set of values, attitude, mode of, uh, or of behavior and way of life that reject violence and prevent conflicts by tackling the roots, causes to solve problems, throat, dialogues, and negotiation among individual group and nation. This culture is based on eight concepts, which are the key elements presented in the program of action uh, on a culture of peace adopted in 1999 
by the General Assembly of United Nations. The first one is the education of peace. Uh, we start by a brief description of these eight concepts. Uh, the uh, education and awareness rising are the cornerstone for developing world awareness of the culture of peace. So we should ensure that children from an early age benefit from education on the values, attitude, modes of behavior, and ways of life to enable them to resolve and dispute peacefully in the spirit of respect for human dignity and tol uh, of tolerance and non-discrimination. In addition, Article 4 of the Declaration indicates that education is one of the principal means of the building of culture of peace. Uh, in addition, Article 9 of the Program of Action contains specific action for, fort, uh, for fost fostering a culture of peace throughout education, including involving children in activities for uh, instilling the values and goals of culture of peace, revi revision of curriculum and textbooks with re uh, regards to peace, encouraging and strengthening efforts in developing skills and values, supporting a culture of peace and expanding the culture of peace uh, initiative in uh, instruction of higher education. We must keep in mind that access to education in many countries is a problem in itself. It is not only due to the lack of educational institution, but also to the culture of different society that reject modern forms of education. For this reason, we need to convince family in undeveloped country to ensure that all girls and young women receive a quality education as their basic rights. Education girls is not just about getting them into school. It's also about ensuring that girls learn and feel safe in school, that they have the, the opportunity to complete all levels of education, uh, acquiring the knowledge and skills necessary to complete in the labor market, that they acquire the social, emotional, and life skills necessary to navigate and adapt the changing world that they make decisions about their own lives and that they contribute to their community and the world. For the second uh, concept is the promotion of sustainable economic and social development. An approach to, to economic planning that attempts to forest economic growth while preserving the quality of the environment for future generations. Under the present circumstances, this important program area for a culture of peace is far from being implemented. Every year, we see that the gap between the rich and the poor become greater, both between countries, north versus south, and among the people without each country. As the rich nation have increasing poverty among their own citizens. Program to eliminate po uh, poverty should be a priority for government, but they do not even mention the necessity of a transition to a culture of peace as one of the necessary steps to eliminate poverty. In the absence of this, it seems doubtful that those programs can uh, succeed because economic growth of the powerful nation continues to be achieved through military supremacy and structural violence and achieve it uh, at the expense of uh, vanished and the weak. Thank you very so, much, Mr. Kabir. I hope, what? can you round up? Because uh, we're, we have to, uh, I hope you can finish one more sentence, please. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, thank uh, you. I will cite briefly uh, the last, uh, the uh, five uh, last concepts. The next concept is the respect for human rights, which is, uh, which is uh, the declaration that human rights that have a uh, thirteen articles affirmation, and uh, uh, we should uh, take it to. Uh, uh, the main idea of this declaration is uh, summarized in the first article, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are uh, endowed with reasons and uh, consensus and should act toward one to another uh, 
in spirit of uh, brotherhood. The, uh, the, the other concept is the equality between men and women, the gender equality. Uh, and uh, the other uh, concept is the democratic participation that we should uh, enhance the democratic participation and uh, we should um, forecast of democratic participation and governance uh, is the only way to replace the authoritarian structure of power which were created by uh, and which have in the past sustained the culture of war and violence. Uh, for the last one, uh, we should uh, highlight uh, the importance of uh, tolerance and uh, the dialogue uh, to, uh, to avoid uh, violence. Uh, and finally, uh, we should uh, highlight uh, the free flow of information and, uh, the, uh, and to push uh, so, uh, uh, union to uh, the notion of disarmament. Uh, thank, you thank you very much, Mr. Kabir. Sorry, I have to stop you, but you have uh, you have really uh, um, shared so much with us already. I'm sorry to stop you, but uh, thank you so much for your introduction. Thank you, thank you so much. I hope maybe you, you can highlight some more uh, during our uh, roundtable, or we can invite you again. Thank you for uh, highlighting the importance of the culture of peace and what is necessary for that. Uh, the freedom of experience and thank you for identifying identifying the necessary elements to make it happen like education uh, economical uh, um, requirements and everything so thank you so much sorry to stop you but i already gave you so much thank more you, time thank you, <laughs> thank you so on. much and then next we go to our uh, last speaker of today but not the least at all uh, it is mrs El elarina chindi uh, she's a lawyer and author participating in conferences and trainings on topics like emotional intelligence, teamwork, career management, and public speaking. Uh, she's, a certifi she's certified in minors friendly law by the Council of Europe uh, and human rights education for law professionals. First, and she also has a first novel out and it's called Values Never Go Out of Fashion. What a beautiful title and very welcome Mrs. Jindi. Mrs. Jeannie, please unmute yourself. Do you hear me now? Okay. It is a great pleasure for me to be here today and uh, to speak uh, uh, for this uh, interesting and very important uh, theme. Uh, I consider this event a great uh, step for uh, all the women around the world and especially for uh, uh, the uh, women in Albania. Uh, being united uh, together and sharing sharing experiences give us more uh, power and strength to challenge uh, everything to deal or to face with the uh, old challenge in uh, our uh, country. Uh, and um, um, when I was listening to this powerful and amazing uh, leader woman, uh, encouraged me uh, to to succeed in. Um, in my objective to be a leader and to make a change in my society. Uh, being um, a woman uh, in uh, leadership in Albania, it is not easy, uh, like uh, in whole in whole world, because of the inequality between men and uh, women. Uh, do you know that, uh, they, that uh, here in Albania is uh, still a wrong mentality that believes that uh, only men are uh, able to be a good leaders. And so we have a great challenge to, to prove that it is not true and that uh, also we women can uh, be uh, a good and a great leaders. Um, year by year, uh, the, uh, the right, uh, rights of uh, women here in Albania uh, have, uh, have been achieved and we have seen uh, the women uh, encouraged uh, in uh, high position, uh, even in uh, those positions that uh, are considered only for uh, men, uh, like uh, as are the military uh, force. And uh, we have, if uh, you know, uh, that we have reached the high level of this structure. Uh, a woman uh, is, uh, was the, the Minister of Defense. But um, uh, 
I want to appreciate uh, the fact that um, also the number of uh, women uh, has been increased in uh, every structure uh, of uh, our institution. Uh, and uh, the second challenge that I cons consider the most important uh, to, to give our contribution in our society is preparing our, ourselves uh, to be a leader. Uh, it is not uh, e uh, easy to be a leader and, and uh, not, not everyone can, uh, can be a leader. Uh, we have to, to make uh, um, a great uh, preparation uh, with ourselves, creating, affirming uh, a strong character with self-confidence and uh, <laughs> believing in our knowledge and being, uh, being an expert in our field. Uh, having um, also, we should be an example in our small environment, in our family, uh, which means uh, we are a leader there. We have to transmit the culture of peace to our uh, children. They uh, will be uh, tomorrow the future generation uh, who will be educated by us uh, with the culture of peace. The, the second thing that I want to emphasize is um, the fact that, uh, like in whole world, uh, our uh, new generation is focused in social media and uh, they are very indifferent uh, with the problem of society. They uh, doesn't not have uh, ambition to, to do something for uh, this society. They uh, are uh, con content with uh, the fact that they have a profession or have a work and uh, monthly income and are uh, not in interested in what happened around uh, ar around. And uh, for us as a leader, uh, it is very important to find uh, this uh, little group who is really interested interested in uh, having uh, a society uh, full of peace and uh, also to attract uh, the, the attention of those who are very indifferent. And this we can uh, do uh, interacting, interacting with them and uh, asking and uh, find, uh, finding which are the real problems for um, this new generation and to give the, uh, the, them a uh, uh, solution. Uh, as a lawyer, I want to em emphasize two uh, very important um, uh, things and uh, which are also violation of human rights. Uh, the first is uh, the violence uh, against women. And uh, we have uh, here uh, physical, psychological, uh, and uh, sexual abuse. Uh, they are women in career and in leadership and uh, dealing with uh, this abuse of their rights um, lead them to uh, demonstrate an interrupt of their career and uh, because they find uh, they they find the difficulties uh, also in uh, raising uh, children as a divorced mother and uh, this doesn't allow them to uh, be a leader uh, also another uh, point is the, the financial income we uh, are not very uh, supported uh, with um, in uh, with the financial uh, economic uh, financial income sorry and uh, this make uh, very difficult to grow up as a woman as a leader uh, and uh, in other fields of uh, of our life and uh, being also uh, a mother a professional or a wife uh, for us is a challenge because we have to, to be uh, present uh, in our full-time job, but also uh, in our family. And this is uh, a part, but uh, acceptable uh, being a mother, uh, give us a very good choice, like uh, being patient or being present in uh, the life of our children and understanding um, their needs, which means this, uh, these are uh, qualities that a leader should have. And, Thank um, you so much, Mrs. Jindi. Thank you very much for your inspired message and intervention. And I'm sorry to cut you off, but we, uh, in the interest of time, uh, I have to. <laughs> but I must say it was very inspirational. 
thank you. Thank you. I understand. I uh, thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Yes, and especially uh, I really liked uh, your insight on uh, and belief that leading starts within the family and the culture of peace starts within the family. Actually, that's really uh, uh, what we always promote with the Women's Federation. So uh, very happy to have you here. And thank you so much. So uh, you have concluded our uh, panel for today. Uh, we had beautiful and inspirational speakers and uh, way too little time. So uh, we will go to the roundtable discussion now. Um, it will be a little bit uh, abbreviated version because uh, we are running a little bit out of time. So uh, as I'm speaking, we will see all the members of our panel uh, presented here. And uh, thank you again, distinguished uh, speakers and women leaders and mentees. So like I said, uh, the experienced uh, women leaders brought their mentees and we will uh, just do one question. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to give Marlies, Mrs. Lechstetter, the opportunity to uh, ask her question to Mrs. Mutonen. And from after that, we will uh, have the discussion uh, based on one question. So Marlies. Thank you very much. So Mrs. Mutonen, I wanted to ask you, what is your, actually your advice for a young woman to become successful in life? Well, um, a, a difficult question, really, because um, the first of all, it's uh, what is successful. So everybody has to decide uh, for herself uh, what is successful. Um, when we talk about uh, mentorship and when we talk about uh, securing a culture of peace, um, so uh, it, I think, first of all, the woman has to know with not so much the goal because this is so definitely but you have to know the way which you want to go but you should always be open for things that, that come along the way you know because if you say you have a goal and you just have this in mind then you are not open for anything else um, so you have to know your way but you should be always open and you always have to stay curious for the things around you. Um, I think it is, um, it is important that you are courageous, that you are persistent. So when you decided your way, that you kind of keep this way going. Um, uh, and I think talking about mentoring, I think it is very important to have mentors or good friends where you can talk, talk openly and where you can reflect and where they can give you the, their reflection. I don't want to say advice, but uh, you know, this is a kind of giving and taking, and this is very important. It helped me very much when I had good friends and I could talk about issues that were important for me. So I had to rely on people who I really could trust. Thank you um, so much, Mrs. Mutu. Yeah, that's very important. And the, the, the dialogue between the generations, I think that's also very important. Both, exactly. For both sides. Thank you very much. Exactly. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Mrs. Mutoren, for your answer. And uh, that's also what we want to focus on in this last part of our uh, uh, discussion or, or the discussion. And the question we want to ask you all is, uh, what Mrs. Mutonen highlighted just now, like why is mentoring a mutually significant relationship? And uh, uh, what challenges can arise and what are uh, the biggest values of that? So you can pick uh, whatever is in the question. So why is mentoring a mutually significant relationship? And I hope the translation is working and I would like uh, Mrs. Uh, Madame Labidi uh, to uh, I would like to give you the floor first. I hope you could hear the translation. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. It's a very good question. It's true that uh, in order to be in the sphere in which we are now, it's important and it doesn't uh, just come by chance. So we need 
uh, a whole process to get there and a monitoring, which is very, very important, like learning. Uh, that starts very early in life. We always need to go forward and uh, and uh, be involved in the civil society and not be afraid of political life because political life is important. Because as uh, the president of Women's Federation said, women uh, carry... Uh, messages and are able uh, to do many things in uh, for their country, for humanity. And uh, let's never be afraid of politics. We always need to go forward. Thank you so much, Mrs. Labidi. Thank you very much. And I would like to invite Mrs. Kabir also to, from your side as her mentee, uh, answer the question is, why is mentoring a mutual significant uh, relationship? everyone could you repeat the, the question please because yes I and, yes i will and i forgot to emphasize please take one minute for everyone because of the uh, the, the elements of time so why is mentoring having a mentor or being a mentee a mutual significant relationship why is it important or good to have mentors in uh, in our lives uh, i think that uh... Wait a minute, I have problem with You are muted now. So, otherwise we will, uh, maybe Mr. Kabir can answer later. And uh, who would like to, oh. to also comment on this? Mr. Kabir, you're not, you're unmuted. You're, you're muted, I mean. You can unmute yourself. We don't hear you. So maybe the technical team can check what is going on with uh, Mr. Kabir's uh, sound. And then I would like to ask uh, Honorable Chipani. Um, I think that in uh, based on the world's experience of every big change, big changes come from small groups. And uh, big changes come from relations one-to-one. Uh, -one. If we want to change the world, we need to change ourselves, our family, our small group of people. And uh, we need to support each other at, at uh, local level. So sometimes when you think about change, we think that uh, we need to impact the big masses and to, uh, to work with thousands of people. No, the real and sustainable change comes with the relation one by one. And this is why mentoring and supporting personally women that are uh, in leadership, but also women at every level, and why supporting each other uh, in, the, in the everyday life, it's, uh, it's important. And mentoring is one of the most successful uh, and uh, important uh, tools that we also use uh, in the work that we do with women parliamentarians oh, and women leaders. So. Uh, I think it's very important and thank you for doing that. And thank you for bringing up the importance of mentoring in the life of uh, women, uh, women leadership. Thank you. Thank you so Could much. Could you hear me now? We hear you, Mr. Kabir. The floor is yours. Uh, sorry, sorry, that I have a problem, a technical problem. I could answer for your question. I think uh, monitoring, uh, we, know, we need to support each other for each, uh, for both gender, male and female, and support each other to have uh, a professional way, to have a better professional way, I think. Uh, indeed, uh, we need to be, uh, we need to have uh, a supportive team uh, for our professional uh, way and uh, should uh, all generation uh, we should bridge the gap between the generation to have uh, uh, best future for our countries and for uh, for uh, for uh, for the uh, new generations thank you so much mr kabir and Mrs. Jean, you were already talking about the family and the importance of the roles in the family. What would you say? What, what would you say? What would be the, uh, the biggest uh, profit of having a mentor? 
Yes, I would like uh, to, to say that uh, uh, having a mentor is very important because uh, we know um, ourselves better with our strength and uh, with a mentor we can uh, prepare a short uh, and uh, long-term objective and with their experience we uh, know better how to, to reach uh, our objective. And uh, also um, for the family, uh, the, it is very important for uh, our society uh, to, uh, to raise uh, children uh, with uh, high integrity in all forms, uh, which will be tomorrow uh, great leaders. Yes, thank you so much. And with these very insightful words to educate uh, uh, sincere and uh, children, I want to conclude this uh, roundtable discussion. It was a bit brief, but um, yeah, we I think another time we can uh, uh, communicate more about the importance of mentoring and how it really impacts our personal lives to becoming confident to being uh, impactful leaders in the world. Uh, we all need mentors and we can all benefit of the intergenerational aspect of the experience, but also uh, the, uh, the other perspectives our perspectives of the youth. We can see that in the families that the grandparents, they uh, learn from their grandchildren and vice versa. So uh, thank you all for being present with us today. Here with we conclude uh, our second part, uh, the panel and uh, round table discussion. And we're going into the uh, third part of our conference today. And here, herefore, I would like to welcome Mrs. Elisabetta Nistri. She is the president of the Women's Federation for World Peace Italy, coordinator for the Women's Federation World Peace South Europe, and she's also certified as a mindfulness educator. So, Mrs. Nistri, I thank you so much to take over, and the floor is yours. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, all the participants that uh, share this time with us until now. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, nice uh, to see you and uh, welcome to the third part of the program. I am Elisabetta Nistri, President of Women Federation for World Peace in Italy. It has been a great program so far, full of content that I am sure had enriched all of us with more awareness on the value of the precious woman potential to contribute to peace in a very concrete way. In the vision of the founder, Mother Moon, the world of peace is not only a dream, but something real that we can build up day by day, working together to care for each other and for those who are in situation of need. That's why we are here now to celebrate with a special hour, three precious women who are actively and tirelessly working to contribute to that vision. His Excellencies, Rabab Sessadr, Mrs. Christelle Carino Landet, Mrs. Irina Borgaceva. They will be given by Women Federation International the hour of Global Woman Peace Ambassador. For the moment, in the virtual version, as you will see soon on the screen, and as soon as possible, in person from a delegate near them. I will invite each of them in the same order to share with us a message. But before that, I would like to read the purpose of this recognition. The Women Federation for World Peace acknowledges Global Women Peace Ambassador those individuals who dedicate themselves to promote universal moral values, international, intercultural, and interreligious cooperation, as well as a strong family life and partnership between men and women, contributing in this way to realize the SDG of UN. Now, I would like to invite His Excellencies Rabab Sadr, daughter of Imam Sadr Elid Sadr and sister of Imam Musa Sadr. She grew up in a family that is totally dedicated to justice and social change. She's married to a Lebanese writer, Hassan Charafedin, with whom she has four sons. And she is the chairperson of the Imam Sadr 
Foundation, a community-based non-governmental organization. Rabab Saad had been uh, able to skillfully steer the foundation during all the difficult times Lebanon had witnessed in the last 40 years. After the sudden abduction of her brother, Imam Musa Saad, in 1978, she worked constantly to keep the foundation active, despite all the political crisis, financial distress, and security unrest. She had to deal with challenges one after the other, boldly but successfully. Rabab Saad's determination has always been to empower those who have no opportunity and to advocate their rights by equipping them with the skills to become self-dependent and productive members of their communities through sustainable de development. Please, His Ex Excellency Rabab Saad, the floor is yours. This is Ms. Tri. Uh, Her Excellency uh, seems not to be uh, present. We had some uh, difficulties with Technical. the and electricity, so yeah. we uh, suggest to move on and hopefully she can okay. come back in. Okay, so sorry for that, but uh, yeah, we, we heard uh, the reality of the difficult situation there. Okay, so now I would like to invite Mrs. Cristel Landete. She is assistant to the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to the, of the Republic of Congo in Italy. Attaché to the permanent representation of the Congo to the United Nations organization based in Roma, FAO, IFAD, and the World Food Program. She is also author of the book Jeune Pilote au Passenger de sa Destination, published in 2021. Since 1995, she is the co founder of the Hollandet Savant School Complex in Brazzaville. And in 2015, she founded also the Children's Day Care Center, Winner Park. I have known her for many years. She has attended and contributed to some Women Federation conference we have done. The last one was in, co in collaboration with the European Parliament Office in Italy on the topic Women and International Diplomacy, Creating a Lasting Peace. Since she moved with her family in 1992 to Masengo, 30 kilometers from Brazzaville, she realized that there was not, there was not a local school. Girl, girls were selling things at the market or were getting married at an early age. So she decided in 1995 to create a school with a purpose to help those families that wanted to give education to their children but had not the possibility. The school started with 15 students and now they have 2,500 students each year. More than 10,000 students already graduated from that school that uh, I know is uh, from kindergarten to middle high, until high school. Uh, and are now working as political leaders in Congo or engineering, uh, teachers and public employers. Uh, the purpose of the school is to educate children to become responsible for their future and the community so that they can become good leaders for the future. So, Mrs. Cristel Landet, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup. Mesdames. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear participants, in all your respective qualities. It's a great pleasure for me to speak at this ceremony. Allow me to thank the Women's Federation for World Peace and uh, the International Association of First Ladies for Peace for organizing this event. I thank everyone for your eminent presence at this ceremony. Despite your many occupations, and especially in this context of increasing cases of COVID-19, please accept my gratitude. Without you, this event would have no impact. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Christelle Karin Olande. I'm assistant to the ambassador of the Republic of Congo in Italy, co-founder of the Olande Savan school in Brazzaville, president of the Crystal Association, writer, mother, and educator. 
I'm passionate about humanitarian affairs. And for this reason, I have given myself objectives to preserve and save lives in the world by putting forward issues related to education. For building peace through education is essential to initiate progress and development of a community. I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some thoughts on the issues that are central to my professional and personal motivations. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the education of young people is a top priority for the development of a nation. It must be placed among the priorities of our actions. I have decided with my association to make education our battle horse. All young people, without exception, have the right to quality education, regardless of their social rank, religion, or race. Young people are the future of our society. Therefore, they must receive a good education to be able to face the challenges of tomorrow. <clears throat> For that, we must all accompany them to succeed in a perfect landing in the world, to lessen the shocks to come in the future world that is being prepared today. A child can only become a great human being if he or she has received a good education, so we must act. In 27 years of full commitment in the educational world, I can without doubt affirm that educating, sensitizing, accompanying, protecting, impacting the young people who are the apple of our eyes and the future of our society is a duty. Let us all act if we want to have more equitable, sustainable, and peaceful world. The challenges of our society by 2030 is to achieve the sustainable development goals. We have just nine years left to evaluate these objectives. The ambition is great, and this is a challenge for all. The main question that we must ask ourselves, however, is, who are the main actors to achieve these SDGs and how can we get there in nine years from now? For my part, young people are the main actors in the perpetuation of these goals. That's why I invite everyone, especially women, to get involved in the education of young people. Dear women, let's make our time the time of love, sharing, transmission of ambitions, accompaniment, transfer of knowledge and priorities. Let's, uh, that's how I invite everybody, especially women to get involved in the education of young people. Let's uh, make our time, the time of love, sharing transmission of ambitions, accompany, transfer of knowledge. Let's live to impact the youth. Let's live for a cause. Let's do something for our youth. Let's be role models. Let's be, let's work together. Together we'll be able to do it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much to Mrs. Cristela Landette. I received some time, some video of the activity she's doing with the school and I see these children always so happy and enjoying their uh, daily life at school that uh, I think sometime we should share this video with uh, some Italian children that are complaining to go to, going to school. <laughs> anyway, I would like... Uh, mm, ah, and now is a special moment because uh, uh, Women's Federation for World Peace uh, Europe is happy and decide to donate, um, yeah, uh, decide for a donation of 500 euro to Mrs. Christelle Carino Landet, uh, co-founder of Landet Savannah School, in support of the work uh, this organization develops assisting children to obtain academic education and in so doing, helping to create a lasting culture of heart and peace. So you will receive this special donation on behalf of Women Federation. Okay, now the, let's see if... Uh, 
Je vous remercie. You're welcome. Uh, any news from Mrs. Uh, his Excellency Rabab Sadr? I'm so sorry if she cannot join. Um, seems not newsy yet. So uh, now I would like to invite Mrs. Irina Bogacheva that uh, uh, is coming as uh, the last of our speaker, but uh, is not the least actually, and uh, for a special reason, because I heard from somebody that uh, today is a special day for her. It's her birthday. So I would like to uh, offer our congratulations and a happy birthday on behalf of all the women and the uh, participants at this conference. So we are wishing really uh, to enjoy this day and a great future. Mrs. Irina Bokacheva, Secretary of the Expert Council on the Education of the State Duma of Russia, is president of the charity fund Revival and Hope, created in 2009. The latter helps talent the children and young people, promoting traditional family values, intercultural dia dialogue and cooperation, charity programs for families in need uh, with adopted or disabled children. The fund also helps orphans to find their families. The motto promoted by the fund is to give love and kindness and to do even small things, but with great love. In the challenging pandemic years 2021, the team of the fund focused even more on helping families and children in need. More than 5,000 children received support and were presented with clothes, school materials, books, and other necessary things. Irina and other members of the fund are in constant contact with many families from different parts of Russia and are always ready to offer psychological and other forms of help. So, Mrs. Irina Bogacheva, the floor is yours. Welcome. We are ready to listen. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, guests and organizers of this meaningful event that is dedicated to the women's role in creating a culture of peace, this is really an honor for me to be part of this wonderful conferences and, and cooperate with your wonderful organization. I'm really grateful for what you do. In many speeches of the prominent women leaders from many countries, we could hear that nowadays, women's role in all the spheres of our life become more and more significant and secures peace and reconciliation. The development the development uh, is not possible without peace, and peace is not possible without the development, but neither peace nor development are possible without women. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the leaders of the Women's Federation for World Peace for appreciating my work and the work of our whole team of the Charity Fund Revival and Hope that is aimed to realize the programs and projects for building international and intercultural cooperation. Of course, I, I didn't expect any award today, and I feel still I have done very little, but I'm very grateful to Women's Federation World Peace that they could appreciate this work and the work of the whole team. Because, of course, without my team, this wouldn't be possible to do anything. That's why I'm very grateful to work together and to help practically help women and children and families. And of course, uh, like our main objective is international intercultural cooperation, and we really strive to revive national culture and traditions, strengthen cooperation and friendship between people of different countries and nationalities, and to offer charity help and support to orphans disabled children and large families from Russia and other countries. And for us, it was also very important what you mentioned here. This is this uh, cooperation between different generations, like mentoring. 
as we can share our wisdom, but we really hope that young people can take responsibility for our future world and become really very, very useful. And we are grateful to also help, to have opportunity to help families from Russia and other countries like Belarus, Ukraine, Syria. And we have been doing this for 13 years. And it's a big honor for our fund to cooperate with Women's Federation for World Peace. We are sure that by working together, taking initiative, supporting each other, we can find solutions to difficult problems of our society and world. Even though we are all women of different races, cultures, and religions, the most efficient way to find solution lies in true fruitful partnership between all dedicated organizations, men and women, in all spheres of our social life. And then we can continue our mission together, mission of kindness, mission of compassion, mission of concrete support and help to people. And once again, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all of you. And coming close to Christmas and New Year, I would like to wish all the participants of the event peace, success in all the activities, prosperity, harmony and love, and also in this challenging time, health to you and all your family members. Thank you so much. Thank you for your speech um, that we appreciate a lot for the deep content. And uh, uh, just because uh, yeah, I'm talking with a, a Russian lady, uh, I like Thank to share. Yeah. Я буду рада показать видео моей большой работы. Yeah, later she would like to share a video, maybe next conference, and then she can also share a video about some practical work. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we are very happy to announce that the Women Federation for World Peace Europe has also decided to give uh, to offer a donation uh, special for a special contribution to the work of uh, Cheva of 500 euro. And uh, so you will receive soon uh, this amount for uh, supporting the activity you are doing in your nation. In, in favor of family needs and children uh, in difficult situation. Uh, thank you again. So I heard that maybe uh, someone can can share about uh, on behalf of His Excellency Rabab Saad. Is it, is it like that? Uh, yes, I'm online. I'm with you. <clears throat> okay. So thank you for coming. Um, so we we already. Uh, share the uh, excellent uh, bio of um, Mrs. Uh, His Excellency Rabab Saad. Uh, yeah, if you would like to share something on her behalf, we are ready to listen. Hello? Maybe. Yeah, so we are very pleased to offer this uh, uh, recognition, Global Woman Peace Ambassador Hour, to His Excellency Rabab Sadr. Uh, for sure, somebody will uh, go and to meet her and give uh, this uh, award in person. And uh, more than that, Women Federation decide to offer. Okay, can you hear me? Sorry for that. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So if you like uh, to give a message on, on behalf of uh, His Excellency Rabab Saad, we are here to listen. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear yes, me? Yes. Okay. Somehow I was muted for a while. Um, my name is Loan Sharafuddin. I'm Mrs. Sadr's son. Uh, she uh, she started this work uh, in 1962 and started with uh, a, a, a literacy program and a, a sewing a school for the women to get out of the house to learn how to read and write. In 1962, we had high literacy. Uh, from that program, um, I'm pleased to tell you that there were three major leaps in that program 
where girls, uh, adults who did not write, read and write, joined that program. Uh, and within uh, short years, they were able to finish their high school. And other years more, they went all the way to college and two of them became engineers, masters of engineering. And uh, one of them became uh, something in arts or literature. I don't remember. This happened early in the 70s. So these three women now are successful women that were supposed to be illiterate for the rest of their lives. Similarly, uh, in, in other programs, uh, later when uh, the war in Lebanon uh, broke out, we had a lot of uh, children that lost their uh, fathers, mothers, or both. They need a, needed a shelter. So a, an orphanage was uh, opened for them. And they were admitted, and this happened, uh, this started in the uh, mid-70s, 1970s. And this orphanage is still uh, receiving more and more orphans. Every now and then we still have uh, uh, newcomers. Uh, what we provide is today, the foundation today in its current uh, situation has more than 1,500 uh, uh, people that beneficiaries that benefit from it, uh, orphans and other uh, sections. Uh, what we do is we take the orphan at the age of five and we keep them, and mainly they're mostly girls. And women empowerment is part of what the foundation does, Imam Sadr Foundation. Uh, what we do is we uh, uh, take them in, uh, educate them, take care of them, uh, health-wise, education-wise, uh, anything they need. We had some conditions where children needed heart, uh, major heart surgery. We did it uh, at our expense. We had uh, students who needed, uh, uh, they had a, a hearing aid problem. They had to be operated on to, uh, to, to become, uh, uh, to, to be able to hear what's going on in there. So we take care of any medical problems and any psychological problems, anything. We uh, stay behind those orphans all the way until they uh, find a uh, uh, find themselves to be independent, whether with a college degree, whether it's a BA, an MA, it doesn't matter. As long as they're prepared to study, we're behind them. And if suppose they met the Mr. Wright and they want to get married, we take care of the marriage expenses, and we even furnish the house. We take care of that. We uh, follow up on uh, her daily issues, her children, etc. So far, and from 1987 until today, we had about 60 different couples that got married uh, in at the foundation. Fortunately, 59 of them are successful. Unfortunately, we had one divorce. But it's <laughs> to to us that's high success rate. Uh, and those who are who feel like they're independent and they don't need us anymore, they're more than welcome to go back to their society, uh, go find a job, go be independent. But of course, they uh, check on us every now and then. And most of those girls who leave us uh, come back and adopt a uh, an orphan, uh, a young orphan close to the age that they uh, left the foundation. Today, as I said, we have 1,500 beneficiaries at the uh, cultural compound in Tyre, South Lebanon. Uh, there are 14 institutions, different kinds of schools in there, from uh, nursery to nursing school, vocational sections, uh, regular school, uh, I said nursing school, nursing school at two levels, uh, high school level and uh, 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 at college level, not, not BS in nursing, 
they finish their college level and they can finish their BS with one or two more years at uh, another university. Uh, and uh, to, uh, to finish this, uh, we have a lot to talk about, but I would like to uh, uh, save you the time. Uh, the cultural compound in Tyre is the third uh, time that we built that foundation. That foundation was destroyed in 1982 uh, when the Israelis attacked Lebanon. In 1984, uh, in 1982, we rebuilt in South Lebanon. It was destroyed again in 1984 by the Israeli soldiers, also Israeli attacks. We rebuilt it in 1986 and it's still going on and it's still expanding and it's still growing. So, but the basically, basically we uh, follow up on 17 of UN guidelines uh, between human rights, children's rights, uh, 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 women empowerment, health issues, educational issues. We follow up on 17 of the guidelines of the UN and we are uh, members of the ECOSOC in the United Nations in New York since 2001. And we also have a chapter in the United States. We have a chapter in Australia. And we're uh, about to open other chapters in Europe and other places. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing uh, uh, this special precious work uh, that uh, the foundation is doing. I am really grateful that Women Federation can provide uh, a floor so that this, uh, all this noble, noble activity can be, can be known from, uh, yeah, to many people. I, I, I'm sorry, my mother could not be with us uh, tonight uh, because of some technical difficulties, some power problems and some internet problems. Uh, she could have uh, explained that herself. But uh, it's, it's a, a long journey. Uh, this year marks her 59th year of activity in social services and human services. And all she wants to do is serve the human being. Uh, she doesn't want any recognition. She uh, was offered a seat in the cabinet eight different times and she turned it down. She was offered seats in the parliament many times and she turned it down. She said, serving the human being from where she is, is the greatest honor she could ever have. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you very much. And please bring our heartfelt congratulations to your mother and our deep appreciation for the work she is doing. And uh, so, uh, on behalf of Women Federation Europe, I am happy to announce that uh, we decided to give a, a special contribution to the work she is doing uh, with a donation of 500 euros. So, uh, in you. some way, uh, we will reach you with this uh, gift, with this donation. And uh, we wish all the best success for the activity you are doing. Thank you so much. So we are uh, at the end of the program, a little bit late, but uh, I see many people are still here with us. And we had been uh, the, about 150 participants that were following us. And uh, as you may know, uh, that we were on Facebook in direct Zoom in, on several Facebook pages, uh, Women Federation. And uh, yeah. Um, I hope you can uh, remain in touch with us and uh, especially I would like to invite all of you to our next European conference, Peace and the Reconciliation in Conflict Zone, that will take place on 11 December, promoted by the Women Federation for World Peace International. All the information you can see there, you can find in the chat. Uh, I want to thank all of you who attended and are contributing with your work to the realization of a better society. I believe in this way we were able to celebrate the International Day of Human Rights in the best way. I wish all of, all of you the best of success in what you are doing 
And please, again, remain in touch with us. Together, we can really bring a big change in the world and in the society. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Nisti. And we would like to conclude with a song. Um, so uh, just as an uh, uh, extra, thank you all distinguished leaders to, to be here with us and hopefully till next time. Let us uh, hear the song. I want to invite you all to sing this song with me together, hand in hand. See the fire. Hand in hand. Hand in hand.